what we're going to try to do here is to calculate the work done by a vector field that we've now seen five or six times. Uh, this is the one that actually looks like swirl. We actually drew that by hand a long, long time ago. We've seen it in this video at least once, right? Um, around the unit circle in a clockwise direction. Um, I'm pretty sure the answer should be positive because we're actually going in the same direction as the arrows. Um, but how in the world are we supposed to do this? Well, we know what the definition looks like, right? We're supposed to be calculating something that looks like this, um, which makes no sense at all yet. Um, by the way, if you give something a curve, a direction, you call it an oriented curve. So an oriented curve is just a path uh, with a specific direction. And we want to go clockwise. Now, if I leave it like this, it's a mess. So this is what we're going to do. Now watch carefully. I'm going to put a DT down here and a DT up here. Um, that's clearly fair. Uh, in the next reading, you were going to actually write that down a little bit more formally. But meanwhile, um, the idea is 100% correct. Um, it also tells us, for example, that the variable needs to be t. Um, and by the way, I have dr dt, and that means I, I need a parameterized curve for r, um, and then I need dr dt, and we're off and running. So this is where we're going to start. Um, I need a parameterized curve because I have to take the derivative of it, and I need a parameterization of the unit circle. We have one that we use a lot. It's cosine t i plus sine t j. Um, I'm not allowed uh, r of t. I want dr dt. So this is actually going to be the velocity vector, although we won't be using that this semester, this, this chapter. This is going to be minus sine t i plus cosine t j. Now, I'm supposed to dot that vector with f. Now let me write down f, and we'll decide what to do. This is minus yi plus xj. Now, we know what this is. This is a vector field. This is a plane full of arrows. But the only arrows we care about right, are the arrows on the curve. I'm going to say that again. The only arrows we care about when calculating work around a curve are going to be the arrows that are on the curve. So what I'm going to do is, is restrict this to being arrows on the curve by making y what y is on the curve. Right? Yes, I'm going to get minus sine ti, and then putting in what x is on the curve, that's plus cosine tj, and that's actually f of xy. And I'm supposed to dot that with dr dt. I'm going to go back to the top, and we're going to dot f of xy, and I'm going to write it like a vector, so this is minus sine t. I, no, I already have the i, I'm already in a uh, vector. And cosine t, so this is f. Remember, all we did to get f is we took the formula for f and plugged in the parameterization. And I want to dot that with dr dt. And remember how we got that. We wrote down dr dt and took the derivative. So I get this. And remember, there's a dt, and we have an integral. But now that t is the variable, we need limits of integration. Well, what do we do? We just took the unit circle and went around once. So this should just be 0 to 2 pi. Now, before I raise this, I just want to summarize. Remember, we're calculating the work done. So we just had the integral of f dot dr. We divided by dt and multiplied by dt. And all of a sudden, we can see that the variable should be t. And we have to have a parameterization for the curve. So we wrote down the parameterization for the curve. We took the derivative of that parameterization of the curve so we can get our dr dt. And then although the formula for f is very, very general, we only care about those arrows that are actually on the curve. And so we plugged in the x, the dy for y, and the x for x. And that gives us the arrows on the curve. And now we had to have f dot dr dt. This is f. This is dr dt. And we are so close to getting an integral we can do. So now we're going to turn this into an integral we can do because we're being asked to dot those two vectors. 
Well, we know how to dot, dot two vectors. We just multiply the corresponding components together and add them together. So I'm going to get sine squared plus cosine squared dt. That's just one dt. Uh, we do the derivative, I'm sorry, we, we do the integral by taking the antiderivative. Antiderivative of one dt is t. I wanna go from zero to two pi, and so I get two pi. Uh, now that is actually the exact amount of work. We can see that like we thought, we got an answer bigger than zero. There is a your term that I want you to go through that goes through the same principle. You're gonna to have to find parametric equations, you can find dr dt, you plug your parameterization into f, you dot the two vectors, you get an integral you can do. Ta-da!